So we recently received new inflation data. Guess what? It showed that the annual inflation rate in the United States has risen yet again. Inflation is currently running at 7% per year. We already know that. As a result of this inflation, Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve intend to raise interest rates thrice this year, meaning they intend to stifle the economy and slow business. However, raising interest rates has the unintended consequence of making businesses and thus stock markets appear less appealing. In contrast, super secure government bonds begin to appear more appealing. And this does not necessarily imply that the stock market will fall. However, a high interest rate environment puts significantly more pressure on the stock market than a low interest rate one. This has been a source of concern for investors. They've made significant progress in recent years. They are now concerned that as interest rates rise, those gains will be reversed. In fact, we may see the opposite. With inflation now approaching 7%, the gloom and dread narrative is gaining traction in the media. Everything just seems a million times harsher these days. It's difficult to avoid a big negative headline front and center on these news sites that isn't about inflation, interest rates, or the Federal Reserve. But all of this talk, debate, and concern about interest rates and inflation always brings me back to what Peter Lynch, author of One Up on Wall Street, said back in 1994. No one can predict the stock market but they can predict interest rates. A billionaire would be concerned if someone predicted interest rates correctly three times in a row. There aren't many billionaires in the world. There can't be many people who can choose interest rates because there would be too many billionaires. And no one can foresee the economy. When we had a 20% prime rate, double-digit inflation, and double-digit unemployment, I distinctly remember every time we experienced the worst recession since the Great Depression. So what I'm trying to say is that knowing what the stock market will do would be extremely useful. It would be fantastic to know that if the Dow Jones average falls by X points in a year, we will enter a full-fledged recession. Our interest rate will be 12%. That's helpful information. However, you never know. You simply do not have the opportunity to learn it. So I've always said that if you spend 14 minutes a year on economics, you've wasted 12 minutes. And I stand by that. We watch that video whenever we feel ourselves getting drawn into market prediction territory. We just went and watched that clip, and we love it because it really makes you actually realize that market predictions and interest rate guesses are a constant in the world of the stock market. This is a 1994 lecture, and all the talk back then was about whether the stock market would crash and what interest rates would be. But did it make a difference? Have you ever taken an economics or finance class where they talked about how interest rates were in 1994 and how much it affected the stock market's long-term performance? No, because it was completely insignificant. The S&P 500 was at 460 points at the time. However, it is now at 4,600 points. But it's funny how at the time, that topic was being discussed as if it had to be figured out or investors would be doomed. And we still talk about it in the same way today. We're still treating interest rates and inflation as if they're the end all and be all of the markets. So after watching that clip, we hope you feel the same way we do. It didn't matter back then, so it probably doesn't matter anymore. Not if you're looking for a long-term investment. The markets experienced 50 drops of 10% or more. That is referred to as a correction. It is a euphemism for losing a lot of money quickly. There have been 50 declines in 93 years, with the market falling 10% every two years. 15 of the 50 declines have been 25% or greater. This is referred to as a bear market. In 93 years, there have been 15 decreases. So every six years, the market will experience a 25% decline. That's all there is to it. You must understand where the market is headed and that sometimes it will be down. You should not own stocks if you're not prepared for that. And it's a good thing when it happens. If you like a stock at 14 and it drops to 6, that's fantastic. You know the company. You look at the balance sheet. They're doing well and you're hoping to get to 22. 14 to 22 is fantastic and 6 to 22 is extraordinary. So you take advantage of these price decreases. They will take place. Nobody knows when they will occur. That is the most important message for investors, for all investors concerned about interest rate, inflation, and a possible recession. Just watch that video a million times. There are some things that would be nice to know, where the S&P 500 will be in a year, or interest rates in two years. But you don't know that, and no one else does. Yes, inflation may run rampant, 
and interest rates may be raised to 15%. Yes, the stock market could fall by 30%, but you won't know when or if it will happen. As an investor, what you really need to do is accept, as Peter Lynch put it, that the market will go down from time to time. You are aware that market declines occur. Nobody saw the pandemic coming. It hit the United States and the market dropped by 30% at the start of 2020. So, as an investor, you must accept that these events will occur and that they will catch you completely off guard. If you are at peace with those two things, you can begin to think about how to approach your investing, which, spoiler alert, is to always keep a long-term mindset. Long-term, the upside outweighs the downside. So you'll ask yourself, do I need the money in the next month? Will I require funds next year? Do I have any college-bound children? I'm getting married soon then you are a poor investor. If you can keep putting money into your 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25 year plans, you should do well. When the market falls, you won't see it coming, and it will sting you at some point during your investing career. So with that in mind, what are your plans? You're a fool if you invest your money that you need in the short term to earn a quick buck in the market. You know you're a bad investor if you invest your money that you'll need to pay your rent tuition for your children, or a wedding, because the market may fall in the short term. Remember, we don't know when it will happen, and if it does fall in the short term, you're out of luck. However, if you invest money you don't need and add to your portfolio on a regular basis over 10, 20, 30 years, you should do very well. So in the end, the answer to the question, how should you invest during high inflation or how should we invest when interest rates are likely to rise significantly? We should approach it in the same manner that we always approach investing, rationally rather than speculatively. Recognize that bad things will happen from time to time. You know you're going to get it at some point. It could be when inflation is high and interest rates are raised, or it could be tomorrow at 2.41 p.m., but who knows? Stay logical and focused on the long term, and that is the simplest way to know you'll do well investing in the market during these periods. But it all depends on your investing personality. Don't get sucked into the news. Don't get caught up in the rumors. Don't be swayed by fear or hype. To summarize, it will always be frightening. There will always be something to be concerned about. But if you own good companies and adopt a long-term mindset, what happens with interest rates and inflation, as well as the market's short-term performance, won't matter as much. That's all we have for today. And if you enjoy the video, why don't you give us a like and subscribe to our finance channel. Don't forget to hit the bell button below to get notifications on when we post next. Thank you for staying till the end of the video and hope you enjoyed. See you next time!